good evening everyone. Uh, I am Riddhi Vilangu. I am uh, one of the TA for the NPTEL course on Thermodynamics. Uh, in the last week, uh, I ended with uh, uh, explaining the mechanisms of heat transfer, uh, the, like three mechanisms of heat transfer, conduction, conversion and radiation. Uh, so today I will just uh, recap, uh, go through a recap of the uh, mechanisms and then uh, we will solve two problems on heat transfer and then uh, I have some problems on uh, uh, enthalpy, heat energy work and so on. So uh, starting with the mechanism, so for a quick recap, uh, we saw there are three uh, modes of heat transfer, the first one is uh, conduction uh, which is given by the Fourier's uh, law of uh, heat conduction that is Q is equal to minus KA uh, delta delta T by delta X. Similarly, convection is given by the uh, Fourier's uh, Fourier's law of con uh, cooling. Uh, the Q is given by Q is given by H sorry, uh, H A delta T. So here T, uh, T is um, uh, delta T is T surface minus T ambient. And similarly, uh, the third mode of uh, heat transfer is radiation. Here, uh, the heat transfer is given by sigma A T surface power 4 minus T ambient power 4. So, here the uh, Sigma is the Stephens Boltzmann law uh, constant, uh, which is 5.67 into 10 power minus 8 with the units of the watt per meter square per kilo power 4. Uh, this we have seen in the last uh, class, so I will directly go to go to the problems now. Uh, I hope I am audible. Uh, can Anyone of you uh, type in the chat box that I'm audible and you can see the screen. Uh, thank you. Okay. Now moving to the problem. For the first problem, we have um, uh, inner and uh, brick wall with the inner and outer uh, surface of different temperatures. Uh, given as 20 degree and 5 degree Celsius, uh, the thickness of the wall is 30 centimeters. The area of the wall is given uh, like in terms of width and height, uh, 5 meters and 6 meters. The thermal conductivity is given as 0.69, and uh, we are asked to calculate the heat transfer rate. So we can uh, note down the uh, important parameters. Area is uh, height into width which is 5 into 6 30 meter square the thickness uh, I write it as delta x is uh, 30 centimeters uh, writing in SI units it will be 0.3 meters then we have thermal conductivity which is represented by k 0.69 watt per meter degree Celsius at a temperature 20 and uh, 5. So, delta T is, you uh, can say T A minus T B, assuming this section is A and this section is B. So, it is 20 minus 5, which is 50. Now, uh, Q is given by minus K A delta T by delta X. 0.69 into 30 into 15 by 0.3. So, 
is uh, will be thousand and thirty five bucks. Uh, do you have any questions with the problem? Also unmute uh, if possible. Ah, okay, sir. Last week we had a question on magnitude of patrons, sir. So, okay. Both, uh, are these questions same or do we need to approach the question in the for the magnitude? Uh, sorry, I don't, uh, I don't, I didn't go through the questions or uh, okay. if there is something in the discussion forum, again, I didn't go through them. Uh, okay. Uh, you can tell me the questions now uh, to me and then maybe I will try to answer. Okay, just a minute, sir. something in the assignment um, and if it is before the deadline I am sure I should not solve the problems for you uh, here and uh, I don't know if this is after the deadline or before the deadline. No, this is after the deadline sir. Okay. This is after the deadline. But it was in the assignment, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I think this problem is similar to this. Uh, now uh, here we have, uh, uh, I will write to the different link. So now delta x uh, we have of uh, 20 centimeters, so it is 0.2 meters, and uh, with an area of 2 meters square, so this is 2 meters square. Temperature difference is given 200, so this is 200 across the one. So I think k is not given. Uh, okay, sorry, 2 k is given as 2 watt per meter kelvin. So maybe if we solve here, we will have uh, two into k. K is two, area is two, and uh, delta t is two hundred divided by uh, delta x is point two. So eight hundred by point. So should we convert it to Kelvin or uh, we can do it? Okay, so that was the question. Okay, so uh, here uh, uh, we have delta uh, delta t uh, in this expression. So in the Q expression we have delta t. So generally uh, 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 the change in temperature in uh, degree Celsius uh, scale or Kelvin scale will be the same. So uh, it can be the anything. So when it is delta t, uh, you can uh, also use Kelvin in, in place of degree Celsius and degree Celsius in place of Kelvin. Uh, why? Because I think I explained in the last class. Um, 
so we have this uh, degree Celsius uh, uh, thermometer which goes from 0 to 100 for uh, uh, for the melting point of water to the boiling point of water and here again in Kelvin scale we have it from 273 to 373 for Kelvin scale so this difference is 100 and again this difference is also 100 so uh, for any change in temperature uh, we can free to choose in degree Celsius or Kelvin it will be the same thank you So, if I have to uh, make this as uh, degree Celsius, it will be like uh, 20 degree Ta to put in degree Celsius, uh, sorry, degree Kelvin, it will be 273 minus this is Ta and Tb will be 5 plus 273 Tb, 273 will get cancelled, so charging after Kelvin. I hope there are no other questions. Then moving to the next problem. Uh, we have a, a iron box uh, of uh, 1000 watt uh, capacity. Uh, it is self exposed to an air at, uh, at 20 degrees Celsius. The convective heat transfer coefficient between the base surface and the surrounding air is uh, 35 uh, watt per meter square. Here they have given us uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient, but uh, they didn't. Okay, they have given watt per meter square per degree Celsius. Okay, then it is high. Then the base has an emissivity of uh, 0.6 and a surface area of uh, 0.02 meter square. Then the temperature of the base of the ion is what we need to find. So now. Um, we have uh, so there is an iron box and uh, say this is the uh, resi coil uh, resistance uh, which is going in and uh, this is generating uh, th uh, this is we are giving 1000 watts of uh, electrical energy into the system and then this uh, at steady state this iron box has to give out 1000 kelvin to the surrounding so we can say q is 1000 watts and this is uh, is coming through two means one is uh, q convection and then q radiation so th i can say this q total uh, should be equal to q convection plus q radiation so q convection we can write it as uh, h a delta t and the Q radiation we have uh, epsilon area T surface power 4 minus T ampere power 4 and uh, we have given uh, we have been given an MC DVD of uh, 0.6 that means uh, um, so uh, for black body the MC DVD is 1 uh, so we don't uh, uh, write any MC DVD for a uh, black body here when we have an uh, non-ideal black body th that means the emissivity of the actual body is 0.6 times lesser than or 0.6 times as, as that of the black body so it can transfer only 0.6 times of this uh, sigma a t power 4 minus t power, t a power 4 so we add an uh, ep uh, emissivity of ep uh, epsilon here so now we have h as uh, given as 35 uh, area area we know area will be common so I can take it on the left hand side so I have Q total of uh, 1000 and uh, area is 0 0.02 uh, then now I have uh, in, in place of HA delta T I will have HN delta T uh, now delta T is given by TS minus T ambient ambient is given as uh, 20 degree Celsius plus uh, epsilon is 0 0.6 into 5.67 into 10 power minus 8 uh, for epsilon and area I have taken on the left hand side 
now I have ts power 4 minus ta power 4 so in this problem uh, we have to we, we don't uh, we just don't have the difference in temperature we have difference in temperature power 4 so here we have to take the absolute uh, uh, scale that is in we have to take temperature in Kelvin scale so that is um, ta to convert to <coughs> Kelvin we will have 20 plus 273 power 4 Again, uh, here also it should be in uh, Kelvin scale because Ts will be in Kelvin. So uh, to uh, for this to be in Kelvin, uh, we should have to 73. So Ta I can write 20 plus 273 equal to 293. Solving this equation, uh, you can solve it easily using a calculator. piston cylinder device uh, initially at a volume of 0.07 meter cube with nitrogen gas at uh, 130 kilopascal and uh, 120 degree celsius. The nitrogen is now expanded to a pressure of 100 kilopascal polytropically with a polytropic exponent whose value is equal to the specific heat ratio called uh, isentropic expansion. Then uh, determine the final temperature and the boundary work done during this process. piston cylinder uh, we have initially 130 kilopascal and uh, 120 degrees celsius and 0.07 meter cube and now this is getting expanded uh, and this process uh, this will follow uh, isotropic expansion so for isentropic expansion we know P1 V1 power uh, gamma is equal to P2 V2 power gamma. We know uh, the gas is a um, nitrogen so for diatomic gases gamma is uh, uh, 1.4. So we have uh, P1 V1 power 1.4 is equal to P2 V2 power 1.4. 
uh, so substituting for the known um, values, P1 is 130 into 10 to 3 pascals into V1 is 0 0.07 meter cube power 1.4 is equal to uh, P2 is known. So P2 is 100 into 10 to 3 pascals into V2 power 1.4. So calculate V2, I have. 0.07 into uh, 130 by 100 so this volume will be 0.084 now I need to calculate the final temperature so uh, I from the ideal gas equation I know P2, V2 is equal to MR TT. Now I don't know the mass, so I should calculate from the initial or I can also do the other one. Um, so now this is equation 1. And similarly, I have P1, V1, and T1. So here, mass and uh, gas constant R will be the same. So I can divide 1 by 2 and have P2, V2, and P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. So now T2 is equal to uh, uh, P2, V2 is uh, 100 kilopascal. P1 is 130 kilopascal into V1 is 0.07 into T1, T1 should be this game, so it is 120 plus 273. So what we have is So T1 was uh, 120 plus 273 which is 393 Kelvin. So after expansion the temperature has gone down. Now um, I have to calculate the work done during the process uh, which is given by the expression P1 V1 minus P2 V2 by gamma minus 1. So P1 V1 is 100 into 10 power 3 into V1 sorry, uh, P1 is 130 into 10 power 3 pascals into V1 is 0.07 minus P2 is uh, 100 into 10 power 3 V2 is 0 0.084 divided by gamma minus 1 we know gamma is 1.4 1.4 minus 1 is 0.4 Uh, is the problem clear or if you have any questions you can ask now. Of uh, 2.4 kg of air at uh, 150. Sir, yeah. yes, so sir. that last problem worked and I am getting 1.1650 1 joules. 1650? One second, sir. One second. 
so it's 130 into 0 0.07 minus 100 into 0 0.084 the whole into 1000 by 0.4 ah oh, yes sir sir i made a mistake sorry frictionless piston cylinder device. The air is compressed now to a final pressure of 600 kPa. During the process, heat is transferred from the air such that the temperature inside the cylinder remains constant. Calculate the work output, uh, work input during this process. Yeah. So, we have some uh, again uh, piston cylinder arrangement. And now, this time, this uh, cylinder is compressed from from initial state of uh, 150 kilopascal to final pressure of uh, 600 kilopascal and uh, this uh, heat uh, that uh, the process is happening at uh, constant temperature so uh, we need to calculate the work input uh, now uh, we know the expression for what done during constant pressure processes p1 v1 non V2 by V1. So currently uh, we don't know V2 but we know the uh, second pressure. So I can write this as P1 V1 non P2 by P1 because uh, for a constant pressure pro uh, temperature process we have P1 V1 equal to P2 V2. So P2 by V1 is equal to P1 by P2. So I got this, but I don't know volume again. So I used the ideal gas equation to calculate the volume. M T1 and uh, first pressure is 150 pascals into volume uh, is what I need to find. And mass is 2.4 kg into R is uh, For air, so we take it to 87 into temperature 1, uh, which is 1 plus 273. So, calculating this, I will get P1 as 600 divided by uh, P1 is 150. But it should be yeah, sorry. 150. Sorry, I think it should be P1 by P2. Uh, yes. Sir. because work done on the system uh, yeah work is done on the system sir one doubt sir yes uh, that uh, for air uh, r we are taking sometimes we take 0.287 some 287 okay uh, so this one uh, so this has the unit of uh, 287 joule per kg kelvin okay and if in the equation everything else has some unit of uh, kilojoules then we take 0.287 okay, okay. Uh, uh, again in this problem so we had p1 v1 uh, 
non something so p1 v1 non v2 sorry we have it p1 by p2 we could have directly used the ideal gas equation and had a mrt mrt1 is the ln of p1 by p2 so here all parameters are known so then we could have uh, calculated directly um, is there any questions i will can take now or we can go to the next problem So we have an uh, well insulated rigid tank uh, with 5 kg of uh, saturated liquid vapor mixture of water at uh, 100 kPa that is atmospheric uh, pressure. Initially 3 quarters of the mass is in liquid state and electric resistor is placed in the tank connected to a 110 volt source and it is uh, a current of 8 ampere flows through the resistor uh, that means it will be heating up the system. and uh, determine how long it will take to vaporize all the liquid in the tank also show the process on a TV diagram with respect to saturation lines so so this uh, so this is a, a rigid container so we can say volume is always constant in the process uh, if we draw a TV curve first we will draw the saturation line so saturation line will be something like this and uh, atmospheric pressure if I say the isobaric line it will go like this so this I will call this as 100 kPa line and uh, they say um, uh, initially we were at uh, uh, 3 fourth of the mass is in liquid phase so this is liquid uh, this is gas this is liquid plus gas and so 3 fourth means um, so from this uh, saturation uh, latent heat zone we will be somewhere here so 3 fourth so this it will be more near to here more near to the liquid uh, line so this is should be 0.25 and this should be 0 0.75 then uh, if we go uh, if we uh, heat it uh, at constant volume we should hit somewhere here uh, in this line it doesn't look like it is hitting but generally that uh, TV curve saturation line will be very steep and something like this so maybe like this gets so this is one constant pressure line kilopascal and this is another P2 uh, which we need to find. So it is, it is not to scale. This curve will be generally very uh, non-linear, uh, this saturation line. So this is 0.25 and this is 0.75. Um, generally for these uh, problems we are allowed to use thin tables where we get the properties of the steam. To the steam table will look something like this. Um, now, uh, since they so they, we know uh, some heat source is given Q, uh, which will be uh, which will change the enthalpy of the system. So I can write Q is H2 minus H1 divided by delta T. Q eight. So here Q is. Uh, given by 110 volt into 8 ampere, so it is 880 watts. So, since enthalpy is a intense intensive property, we uh, multiply mass to get the overall heat. First, uh, our objective. Uh, first, we will start with uh, calculating the enthalpy at this point. First point, and then uh, we know uh, the volume at this uh, uh, at the first state, 
and then we need to find at the saturation line where the same volume uh, occurs and then then we can calculate the pressure so if we go go to the uh, steam tables uh, here we have uh, different pressures the and uh, this represents the saturation line uh, or the this line this line is given so so uh, for different uh, pressure it is given in bar uh, i don't know if it will be entirely visible but i will explain and this uh, pdf will be uh, given to you later so this pressure will be in bar so uh, here we have one one bar pressure la line and this uh, temperature is given as 99.63 that means at one bar uh, pressure uh, the water boils at 99.6 uh, degrees celsius and uh, we have uh, rho here rho of uh, rho f uh, that is density of the liquid here we have rho g which is density of the steam if it is completely steam uh, then we have enthalpy of the hf enthalpy of liquid hg enthalpy of uh, the steam or the vapor then we have s1 uh, sf sg meaning meaning entropy uh, this we will not be needing but uh, here we have uh, vf and vg uh, which represents the specific volume of uh, the fluid and the gas so now that we know uh, uh, the the our first state is in pressure one uh, it is somewhere here uh, we can calculate the enthalpy at state 1 using uh, hf and hg so which is given by hf plus x into hg sorry uh, hf into hg minus hf so here x is the dryness ratio for us the dryness ratio is uh, 0.25 so uh, if it is zero we will have only hf that means zero means uh, fully liquid uh, full liquid state so we will take enthalpy of the liquid and if it is one uh, it will be uh, hf and hf will get cancelled and we will have only hg so that means it is full steam so now we have a ratio of 0.25 uh, like 25% of the mass uh, contains steam so we will take 25% uh, for the Uh, uh properties of the steam and uh, 75% properties of the uh, water so cal uh, to calculate hf we have we know that it is 417.51 plus uh, dryness ratio is 0.25 into hg minus hf it is also given by this uh, column r so i can take it as 2257.6 this will be so this is 981.9 kJ per kg so these units are in kJ per kg and these are in meter per kg So now uh, I want to calculate V1. Uh, for V1, I have uh, V1F plus X1 into uh, V1F. So generally, V1F can be neglected because when compared to the volume, specific volume of the steam. the specific column of the liquid will be very low so i can directly take x1 into v1g so that is 0.25 into v1g is given here uh, 1694.3 into 10 to the 3 into k so here there is a 10 to the 3 so i take it so that is uh, Four twenty-three point five seven meter cube per kg. Now um, we we were told that um, 
this system. <coughs> this system is heated such that uh, uh, till all the liquid becomes vapor yeah, how long will it take to vaporize all the liquid in the tank so so that means we have just, uh, we have no uh, we have arrived at this point uh, point 1 and now we are moving to point 2 uh, for these two points, uh, only known quantity uh, or the same quantity is volume, specific volume, which is which we have calculated as point uh, four twenty three meter cube per kg. Or oh, sorry, I think uh, I missed into ten per three. Into ten per three meter cube per kg. So now I can go to the steam table and find where I uh, I would get. Uh, is equal to V1. So, where I would see 423 for the um, steam. So, that is somewhere between these two. So, uh, the first or the in this row, second uh, between these two, the second line is uh, 4 bar uh, saturation pressure and it has a uh, VG of uh, 462 and for 5 bar we have 374. So that means we need to interpolate. I will just write down so that it is easy for you to uh, follow. So we have pressure, we have Vg. So for 4 bar, we have 462.46 into 10 to 3 meter cube per kg. This is in bar. And for 5 bar, we have 374.86 now we can interpolate between these two we know our v2 is somewhere in between which is 423.5 or i will say into 0.6 into 10 power 3 into cube per kg and uh, to uh, and i can interpolate between these two and i will get what would be the saturation pressure at this condition so that can be uh, done like using the general line equation. We have y minus y bar. Y minus y1 by y2 minus y1 is x minus x1 by x2 minus x1. Here I assume y is the pressure. So I calculate I want to calculate y, which is the uh, pressure in between this line. And I will take uh, 4 bar as the, as the as the first condition and 5 as the, as the second point. Now uh, for x I know that it is 423.6 x1 at 4 bar is uh, sorry uh, x1 I take it as specific volume so at 4 bar it is 462.46 and uh, for x2 I have uh, vg at 5 bar which is 374.86 minus this I can calculate y as 4.445 bar so that is P2 now that I have calculated P2 uh, I can calculate the enthalpy at the second state and uh, I can go back to the heat tran uh, like total heat transfer rate and I can calculate the time time taken to for this conversion. Now uh, to calculate the, the enthalpy again I have to do the same interpolation because I have data between only 4 and 5 bar. So for pressure between 4 and 5 bar I have H, uh, uh, Hg in Two seven three eight. Two seven three eight. Two seven. And I need to calculate for four point four five. Again, I can do the 
have the same expression so you can have y to be the pressure and now that I know y, y is 4.45 minus y1 y1 is uh, 4, y2 is 5 and y1 is 4. So we have x which has to be calculated. Uh, x at 1, first point uh, enthalpy is 2738 states I know Q is equal to M into H2 minus H1 by delta T. So delta T is equal to M which is uh, 2.4 kg sorry 5 kg 5 into H2 is 2742.9 minus H1 H1 enthalpy I have is 981.9 81.9 and uh, this is in uh, kilojoule per kg so I convert everything to SI units so I will have only joules per kg and here I have the Q which is uh, 880 watts or 880 joules per kg so this will be approximately 3600 seconds so I will just go to the problem again. Uh, we were told that uh, there is a rigid container with the uh, water, with saturated water, water vapor mixture, and uh, we have uh, three fourth of the mass of the mixture to be in liquid state and remaining in uh, vapor state and there is a heater coil going inside the container which uh, heats up using a voltage source of 110 and current flowing of uh, 8 ampere so with this we can know the heat rate that is flowing in and uh, the, uh, uh, at, the, at the end of this uh, uh, heating the, all the mass inside the container has become vapor so the three fourth of the uh, three fourth of the liquid state has become as vaporized, but this is happening in a constant uh, vessel chamber. So we need to find uh, how long it will take. So to calculate this, uh, we don't know like when we heat and it becomes vapor, the pressure will also change. Initial pressure is given to be uh, 100 kilopascal, uh, but the final pressure is not known. So to calculate the final pressure, we uh, used um, specific uh, volume at the initial state and it should be equal to uh, at the final state also because it's a rigid container and based on the uh, so initially we have uh, our point somewhere in between the uh, the saturation lines somewhere here so which is 0.25 times uh, away from the liquid line and 0.7 times away from the vapor line uh, with this we can calculate the specific volume and then uh, to calculate uh, the uh, we know that the second state it uh, is at the, is on the vapor uh, line saturation vapor line and we can uh, we can go through the steam table and we can cal we can see where the, uh, uh, the vapor line cuts this uh, constant volume line and then we uh, establish this point 2 then we calculate the enthalpy at point 2 now we know the difference in enthalpies and uh, we know what is the heat that is getting transferred uh, heat rate that is getting transferred so we can calculate the time taken for the conversion uh, is this understandable if you have any doubts you can ask now
here we have a piston cylinder device which uh, contains steam initially at 1 mega pascal which is uh, 10 bar uh, at 450 degrees celsius and 2.5 meter cube this steam is allowed to cool at constant pressure until it starts uh, condensing show the process on a tv diagram with uh, respect to saturation lines and uh, determine temperature and the amount of heat transfer. So to represent this in a TS Initially it, it is at a higher pressure and then it is allowed to cool down. So uh, 10 mega pascal 450 degrees Celsius. Uh, if you can see the steam table, we will know that it is in the super uh, uh, superheated state. So until it starts condensing. So uh, initially it is somewhere here, uh, which is 450 degrees Celsius. And then uh, it, is, uh, it is made to cool down at constant pressure. So we have the constant pressure line something like this. So uh, it is cooled down until it starts converting. So the second point is somewhere here uh, on the saturation line. Now we need to find the mass of the steam and the final temperature and amount of heat transfer. So to uh, now that we know it is a um, superheated state, uh, we can go to the steam table for superheated uh, steam and then uh, calculate the properties like how we did earlier, uh, like inter uh, using interpolation. Or uh, I have got some values here using some Fermi calculator. Uh, I have entered 100 bar absolute pressure and uh, temperature of uh, 450 degrees Celsius. Now I have calculated, uh, now I have got the saturation temperature as uh, 310 degrees Celsius, but I think that is not needed. Uh, we will, what we need is the uh, specific volume. Since we need to find the mass of the steam and volume is given to be 2.5 meter cube, we need a specific volume to calculate that. Uh, we know specific volume is uh, volume per mass, uh, volume is given to be 2.5 kg mass is equal to total volume by specific volume, total volume is 2.5 meter cube divided by specific volume is 0 0.0297, so calculate the final temperature so the final uh, when we uh, keep uh, cooling down at a constant pressure the temperature keeps uh, coming down until the saturation line so the temperature at this point is the saturation temperature at this pressure which is given as 310.9 so I would write T2 as uh, 311 degrees Celsius now we need to, uh, uh, the third one we need to calculate is the amount of heat uh, that is transferred. So for this we need the uh, enthalpy at the final state. Uh, enthalpy at the initial state uh, is uh, given from the table or from this value. So that is H1 is equal to 3.24 into 10 power 6 joule per kg. And for the saturated uh, steam for the second state uh, I go to the saturated uh, saturation steam table and then for this uh, pressure of 10 mega pascal I can calculate
that I see the value and it is 2.72 into 10 power 6 joule per kg. So to calculate the total heat, I have mass into H2 minus H1, which is uh, M is uh, 83, I have write 84. H2 is 2.72 minus 3.24 into 10 power 6. Once we have the enthalpy, we can calculate the uh, distance. This is negative because uh, the heat is, uh, the steam, steam is cooled down, that is, heat is taken out of the system. Any questions, or I can move to the next problem? Second big problem which uh, we will solve because of lack of time. So, at a certain location, wind is blowing steadily at 10 meter per second. Determine the mechanical energy of air per unit mass and the power generation potential of a wind turbine with 16 meter diameter at that location. You can take air density of uh, 1.25 kg per meter. So, uh, we need to calculate the energy content of the air per unit mass. So, for kinetic energy is given by half mv square. Now, we need to calculate kinetic energy per unit mass, which will be half into v square, which is uh, 10 square by 2. calculate m dot um, I know that um, flow rate q dot is area into velocity so m dot is rho aav rho is 1.25 into area is 2827 into velocity is 10 
if you have any questions, uh, you can ask now. Otherwise, uh, this video will be available on YouTube and the link will be shared with you. And uh, this PDF also will be shared with you in some Google Drive. If there are no other questions, I would close the session. Thank you everyone for joining. So the properties of pure, pure substance, uh, sir, started this week, Ah, uh, yes. Yes. So, I think he, he will be today. how to use the tables. Yes, I think it will come in upcoming. But I think uh, this is not so difficult, right? The first one was easier in comparison. Uh, so the recognition. This one. Oh, yeah, this one. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. No, only recognition of a whether it is superheated or saturated. So. Ah, okay. That okay. So again, I think uh, this uh, we can directly say that uh, from the question itself we can directly say that because they say it is your audio is too high. Sorry. Uh, so from the problem we can say that it is cooled down to saturation line so that means it is initially uh, at a uh, superheated state if not you can also look into the uh, steam tables and then find uh, for this uh, pressure and temperature it will be in super okay. so this session will be held twice a week or once uh, I will conduct it once a week and uh, my another TA is there, uh, he will also conduct on a, once a week. So that will be on Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. yes. from not 7 to 8 or I think something okay, sir. Like that. Okay, sir. Due to work, uh, I was not able to attend the earlier session. Okay. So I was only going through recorded. So today is the first time I attended live. Oh, okay. So that's why I asked. Okay. We are following Singel and Bolt, sir. Ah, yeah, this uh, is from Sanjay and I had some questions from PK Network also. Uh, oh. Not uh, today, I think, but earlier I had. Uh, okay. So for uh, get XA, if you prepare it from this, it is sufficient. Uh, that I'm not sure. Um, I think you have to look for the syllabus uh, between the gate and uh, this one. Yeah. At least for basic thermodynamics. Yeah, basic thermodynamics, this is fine, absolutely. But uh, yes. for gate, uh, you have to check if both uh, syllabus matches. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Anyway, if you have questions also, you can ask in the discussion forum and then we can, questions on this one, you can ask in the discussion forum and uh, we can answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you.